We're entering a period of exponential change in the world, a new industrial revolution driven by technological advances. And our workplaces are already deeply impacted. Our human teams are being joined by agents, artificial intelligence that learns on the job and can perform multiple tasks and processes. Agentic AI may revolutionise the way we work and manage teams on a scale we haven't seen in a hundred years or more. What might that mean for humans, for our jobs, and for the future of work? They can take on increasingly complex tasks. I can give it a bunch of information, documentation from my work, so it knows me, my work, and then I can ask it to take that content and write me a paper. I'm Isabel Berwick. I lead the FT's working at Brand, speaking, presenting, and writing about management, leadership, and workplaces. In this series, I'll explore some of the most pressing issues around the future of work and talk to senior leaders about how they are making work better. So, what is Agentic AI? Very simply, I think of Agentic AI like a wind up toy. You set it up with access to multiple platforms and processes, give it a task, and off it runs, and carries on until the task is completed. Agents are capable of acting autonomously, making their own decisions, without much human supervision. There's Agentic AI, as the tech sector would like to explain it, and that is the idea of a completely autonomous technology in which AI takes control of something, doesn't need any kind of human interaction, and just goes ahead and gets the job done. Whatever it is you need doing, buying stock, talking to customers, interacting with internal employees, it's all done for you. The idea is it will just, you, you give it sort of a very broad remit, and it will go and do everything at the same time. In workplaces, agents can already approve expenses, onboard workers and clients, and collaborate on project ideas. They might also work in customer experience and client management. Top tech firms have all launched tools intended to complete complex tasks with little or no human instruction. OpenAI just unveiled ChatGPT Agent in July. The technology is supposed to analyze and summarize information from your calendar and beyond, as well as devise plans based on what it finds, from breakfasts to briefings. Agents are embedding throughout organizations from the recruitment stage through to management. Sounds scary? Top executives are already on board. I spoke to Colette Stahlbaumer, co-founder of the Microsoft Work Lab and general manager of Microsoft 365 Copilot. She leads the team behind the Microsoft Work Trend Index. When we met at the FT's Women in Business Summit in London this summer, I asked Colette to share her advice on what steps leaders should take with AI now, especially those leaders who haven't really got started yet. Really, leaders seem to be ahead of employees. Last year when we looked at the data, employees were actually experimenting with AI in their work and leaders were actually kind of catching up. Now we see in the data that that has flipped. But, you know, still only 1% of companies have say that they've completely implemented their AI strategy. So we're still in the early innings of this. The thing that's important to know now is if you haven't started yet, you're already behind. So I go again? So how quickly will global workforces adopt Agentic AI? Research company Gartner says that Agentic AI use will skyrocket in the coming years. Gartner asked more than 3,000 business leaders how they will move forward with Agentic AI. And nearly half say they are planning a conservative investment. There's also some suggestion that a lot of the AI hype is just that, hype. I asked my colleague Melissa Hakeler, the FT's AI correspondent, to share her insights into what's happening right now. A lot of it is hype, for sure. A lot, a lot of it is hype. People are really, really keen to see this being rolled out in, in the real world and also see a return for investment. You know, companies and investors have poured billions, if not trillions of dollars into this technology. And now the big question is, what is the killer app? What is this te technology actually useful for? And we don't really know that yet. Um, companies everywhere have this almost 
FOMO or fear of missing out, that if they don't adopt and use the technology, they'll fall behind their competitors. Optimists say that using the technology will help reduce workplace drudgery, leaving more time for employee creativity. I spoke to Zig Serafin, CEO of Qualtrics, a US-based experience management company. I asked him what the future will look like if and when our teams at work include both humans and agents. What that means is that the nature of work that can be agentic or that can be, become agentified or better automated or um, be able to take the rudimentary, basic, repetitive, highly predictive, rules-based tasks and have AI do that work and then be able to allow people to spend, things that are, spend time on things that are more human starts to change. More human means focusing on creativity, focusing on uh, areas that require complex judgment, uh, areas that require strategic thinking, areas that might require much more of you know, craftsmanship uh, and being able to require much more of a human approach to something. All of these forms are more human. And so if people can spend more time on things like that, that usually improves uh, the organization's ability to be able to create things that are more human, be able to create more human connections while more of the repetitive things become more automated as a result of that. So if you step back and you look at an organization, even though things won't change overnight, organizations will become less rigid. Is AI coming for the traditional org chart, the organogram? You know, we all know them, they're the hierarchy of work. It shows us where we sit in the office structure. But experts say that agents that can perform autonomous tasks could soon replace humans in part of the org chart. And if that happens, it's going to have profound effects and knock-on consequences for the future of work. To go deeper, I spoke to renowned trust expert Rachel Botsman. I visited Rachel at the London Design Biennale, where her installation, Roots of Trust, reimagines the first known company organisational chart, what we now call the org chart, dating from 1855 with agentic AI set to disrupt the traditional company org chart, mixing human workers with AI-based colleagues, Rachel shared her thoughts on how humans will react to this extraordinary shift. So are humans hardwired, do you think, to resist change? Or you know, with the agents and AI coming in, are, is that a human thing to kind of be wary and, to use one of your words, you know, mistrusting? Mm. Um, not necessarily mistrusting, but human beings are wired to resist change. So I talk about a concept like called a trust leap. And so a trust leap is whenever you're asking someone to take a risk, to do something new or to do something differently. And we resist trust leaps because we like the known and the safe and the familiar. And whenever you're asking someone to trust a new system, a new product, a new innovation, a new leader, you're asking them in some way to move into the unknown. As workers worldwide grapple with trust and the rapid implementation of AI agents, we have concerns ranging from job losses and jobs becoming obsolete to privacy violation, because those agents scrape a lot of data, often from multiple platforms and sources. The skeptic in me wonders about the long-term consequences of this headlong rush to implement agents in our workplaces. Um, however intelligent it is, it's still a something. And my fear is not a lack of trust, it's actually misplaced trust. And it's how honest we are about the intentions and the motives of that something. And how that person who's using it realizes it's not a real human being. Because this is the first time in history that the line, the distinction between human trust and technological trust it's not even blurred that we don't know where that line begins and ends. So agentic AI, this is something called agentic washing, which is the idea that tech companies are telling people, they're telling companies right now that agentic AI is a thing, that it works, that you can sell it. It's more expensive than just getting access to a normal ChatGPT chatbot because it can do more. And we're in a peculiar point in time where AI companies are spending massive amounts of money on research and development, and they're getting in quite a lot of money, but not as much as they're spending. Agentic AI is a way to balance that out. The problem is that truly agentic AI, totally autonomous AI, does not yet exist. And that's for two reasons. One is because it's very difficult to, to give it a remit and let it go ahead and, and do everything. But the second one is that it gets things wrong all the time. 
So how are companies avoiding agentic washing? How can they make sure it works? I find it very, very important to not only use it internally, but we also partner with customers around the world who uh, like to kick the tires first, but ultimately help us to be able to finesse the use of the AI in a way that makes a great difference. So that by the time we end up launching the capability in the market, usually we'll have 50, sometimes 100 customers that are already using the system at scale uh, so that it's been tuned and polished such, it's, such that many other customers can take advantage of it. It's not a finished product yet. It's not something that can just run without anybody watching over it. This is still something that we're testing out and that fails, and fails in interesting ways, but still fails. We are definitely the guinea pigs, and I think a lot of it has to do with the cost of R&D and AI, and that might not be something that the companies themselves want to talk about, but that's the reality for AI at the moment. The amount of money that they're spending to pursue superintelligence, to pursue AGI, is vast, billions and billions of dollars. The amount that they're getting in is nowhere near covering that. So they're still working out their revenue models right now. Agentic AI, the sales of Agentic AI are part of that experiment. We are part of that experiment. There's a lot of buzz at the moment about huge numbers of jobs being lost to AI. Is this what the future of work looks like? Some in the tech world are really excited. You know, they're, really, they're saying in a few years we might get the world's first one-person unicorn. Um, unclear if that'll happen. If you want the real genius or really, really good quality, you still need a human. Language models work by um, generating the next likely word in a sentence. So often you get you know, the most statistically average result. Um, and you still need humans for real ingenuity or creativity or something that goes beyond the, the average. So I don't think humans will ever be replaced. Right now, levels of optimism and investment from tech leaders seem to be far outstripping the reality of what agents are doing in workplaces. But things move so quickly at the moment. Leaders have to be ready for the agentic revolution, however it unfolds and wherever it takes us.